RimWorld. Everybody loves RimWorld. RimWorld began as the passion project of just one developer, Tynan Sylvester, who previously worked on Bioshock Infinite. As RimWorld has grown, so has the team behind it, into the small indie studio Ludian. I've been playing RimWorld off and on since about 2017, and have been trying to make a YouTube video on what makes its storytelling so good for nearly as long. And now I finally think I have some coherent points on why I think this game is such a masterpiece. So buckle up buckaroos, let's get into the game design that makes RimWorld such a great storyteller. In a GDC talk, creator Tynan Sylvester describes the production method he used when making RimWorld, and the one that continues to be used by Ludian. The giant ideas reservoir. That's another Google Doc. And this one, I record every inspiration and every idea and, and everything that comes up that seems like it could possibly ever be worthwhile. Regularly put effort into sorting the ideas reservoir to put the best ideas on top. To me, I just basically do a bubble sort. I compare pairs of ideas, and if they seem out of order, like this, this one's on top, but this one seems stronger. I just put the lower one on top. But how do you evaluate each idea? Well, Tynan describes his criteria for good features as ones that have the potential to create emotional moments. Let's look at the mining mechanic in RimWorld. In the base game, a colonist mines an outcrop of compacted steel and is rewarded with some steel material, which can be used for crafting and whatnot. But this is not how steel mining works in the real world. In the real world, first iron ore and coal are mined. The coal is baked to remove the oxygen and turned into coke. The coke and iron ore are then heated in a blast furnace with limestone. This mixture is then baked in an oxygen furnace and then refined further into steel. If RimWorld was a game that pursued an in-depth realism, then you could argue that the game would be better if it had a longer, more in-depth process for making steel. But ask yourself, would the process be fun? Or better yet, would this process generate any interesting interactions? Is there any emotional excitement or drama that could develop from loading a blast furnace with limestone? RimWorld avoids needlessly complex systems that don't offer the potential for emotional moments. But RimWorld is no stranger to complex, detailed systems, however. Take, for example, the health system for animals and colonists. Each living thing in the game is made up of body parts that can be bruised, cut, scarred, infected, and chopped off, including organs which can be harvested and transplanted. Each body part contributes to a colonist or animal's vitals. A bruised leg reduces movement speed, a bad back causes pain and reduces manipulation, and smoking drugs like smoke leaf reduce the ability to speak. It's a cool, in-depth system, but importantly, the depth of this system can lead to interesting emotional moments, like the drama of a doctor trying to quickly amputate a colonist's infected limb before it spreads through the body and kills them. But the doctor can only work at 70% speed because they're still drunk from last night's party. Or spending your time creating a superhuman cyborg warrior, augmented with all the very best combat bionic body parts making them an unstoppable killing machine, who then gets their eyes pecked out by an emu and is now blind and can't shoot anymore. RimWorld's design doesn't pursue some super realism, but is instead tightly focused on the mechanics that generate interesting situations and stories. So RimWorld has some solidly designed mechanics, but it squeezes even more potential from these by utilising the most powerful game engine of all, the player's imagination. Hear me out, there are four different scenarios for mechanics in a game. Mechanics can exist and the player notices them, which is what the designer wants. They can exist and the player doesn't notice them, which isn't great because it means the mechanic isn't really contributing to the experience. The mechanic cannot exist, which of course means the player doesn't notice it seems pretty obvious, but what if I told you that the player could notice a mechanic that isn't actually in the game? This is possible because of the way our brains are wired. Our human brains are incredibly good at spotting patterns and using these patterns to predict behaviour. Simple things like noticing every time someone eats one of those bright red berries they die, or realising that you can track the sun in the sky to predict the time of year 
and know what time to plant crops. Of course, our brains can spot false patterns and create connections between things that aren't related. A simple example is spotting clouds in the sky that look like things we recognise. Of course this cloud isn't a dolphin, is in no way related to dolphins, but your brain probably leapt to that connection. The name for this phenomenon is apophenia. I am probably pronouncing that wrong. The tendency to spot patterns where none exist. A classic example of apophenia is the gambler's fallacy, a common occurrence when people who play roulette or lotteries claim to spot patterns in the numbers and try to predict future outcomes, which, of course, is nonsense. RimWorld attempts to exploit this pattern spotting tendency to have the player interpret a greater complexity in the simulation and create deeper emotional responses. An effective way to create these interpretations is through deliberate ambiguity. For example, the ambiguity of information on the social screen. Colonists frequently have social exchanges, when chilling in a rec room together or just passing each other in a field as they go about their work. And a very cool procedural social system generates information on these social interactions. These interactions are deliberately ambiguous, like this colonist told a joke about corn to another colonist and this started a social fight. What was the joke? We don't know that information, it's deliberately ambiguous, to get our pattern spotting brains to start imagining what the joke was and trying to piece together why it was so offensive. Do colonists have memories of things? Do they have specific topics that upset them? Before you know it, you're creating backstories in your head and emotional connections to your colonists are likely to follow. The same technique is used in the conversation system in the Sims series. Another type of ambiguity can be seen in the game's art style. It is deliberately utilitarian and takes direct inspiration from the game Prison Architect. Objects like furniture, structures and items are drawn in a simple top-down perspective to give your brain room to imagine how everything looks from a character's perspective. And you can tell that this works if you look at the vast amount of detailed fan art that people create based on their playthroughs in RimWorld. Whilst building your settlement in RimWorld, events will happen that change or influence the game. These can be positive events, like a new colonist joining your settlement, or negative events, like a toxic fallout that causes ash to rain down on the map, killing every living thing it touches. The frequency and difficulty of these events can be changed depending on the AI storyteller you choose at the start of your playthrough. The most common type of negative event is raids. A hostile faction will arrive on the map and can either directly attack you, try and sneak around your defences, or siege you with mortars. Raids are always proportional to your colony's wealth and not its age, so there's less risk of a massive raid happening right after another recent disaster. Raiders are also programmed to not continue attacking you until the settlement is completely destroyed. If they have you beaten, with all your soldiers down and your base partially on fire, then they'll just steal some of your stuff maybe kidnap some fallen colonists and then leave. After a devastating raid, some players may consider this to be a failure state, and might be annoyed since they interpreted the raid as a skill test that they have failed. This is the wrong way to look at it, since RimWorld is a story generator, and devastating events are designed to push the story onwards. So after a devastating raid, the game is giving you the chance to enact the traditional story trope, seen in a lot of westerns of rebuilding your settlement after the raid, becoming stronger, and who knows, you may encounter those colonists who were kidnapped again with a chance to rescue them. The player's loss is also a chance for later and greater victory. Well hey! Fancy meeting you out here. I guess you must have watched the video to the end, which I'm incredibly grateful for. I'm just out here with my boy Buster. He's pretty camouflaged out here, so I'm trying not to lose him. Um, yeah, so future content, I'll probably be posting some more videos about any game dev projects I'm working on. And if you want more updates on what I'm up to, Twitter's over there. Thanks for watching.